Hey, class, welcome back to today. As you can see, we're talking about the California Gold Rush. I'm going to go ahead and present it. I don't know if you'll be able to see me again after this, but we're going to, I'm going to go ahead and present. And uh, I'm doing this on Chromebook today. So uh, here we go. Like we're talking about today, we're still talking about westward expansion. We are talking about the California Gold Rush. And uh, during the California Gold Rush in 1848, at Sutter's Mill, gold was discovered. And when gold was discovered, all these people flocked to California to try to strike it rich. They wanted they wanted money. They wanted quick, quick, quick money. And uh, some of them came and they got rich. Some of them didn't. Uh, and the people that sold the supplies got more rich a lot of times than the people that, that were panning for gold, mining for gold, because they would up the prices on shovels on everyday items they needed and they would up the prices and they became very wealthy that way. So, but that's what we're talking about today, the California gold rush and how it, uh, it expanded the West because of the California gold rush. It took place between 1848 and 1855. And when gold was discovered in California, over 300,000 people rushed to California to strike gold, to find gold, to strike it rich. And it was just not, it wasn't just sellers, people from all over all over the world that came. When was it? The California Gold Rush took place between 1848 and 1855. During this time, gold was discovered in California. Over 300,000 people rushed to California to find gold and then strike it rich. So, so gold was first discovered in California by James Marshall at Sutter's Mill near the city of Coloma. Uh, he was building a sawmill for John Sutter, and he found some shiny flakes in, in the river he told John Sutter about the discovery, and they tried to keep it quiet. They wanted to keep it quiet because they didn't want everybody to come rushing in. But that didn't happen, okay, because word got out, and everybody rushed rushed to California to try to find gold. Gold is found in California. Gold was first discovered in California by James Marshall at Sutter's Mill in the city of Coloma. James was building a sawmill for John Sutter when he found shiny flakes of gold in the river. Told John Sutter about the discovery, and they tried to keep it secret. However, soon word got out, and prospectors were rushing to California to find gold. All right, so the 49ers next year, before before the gold rush, there was only about fourteen thousand non Native Americans that were living in California, but this changed. Okay, and uh, around six thousand people arrived in eighteen forty eight after hearing about it, about hearing gold being discovered, and in eighteen forty nine, about ninety thousand people arrived to hunt for gold. And these people were called the forty nine ers because the year eighteen forty nine they came there. There's about ninety thousand of them. So, uh, but they came from all over the world. They came from America. They came from places like China, Europe, Australia. All these different places came because they heard about the gold being discovered in California. The 49ers. Before the gold rush, there were only around 14,000 non-Native Americans living in California. This soon changed around. This, this soon changed. Around 6,000 people arrived in 1848, and in 1849, around 90,000 people arrived to hunt for gold. These people were called the 49ers. They came from all around the world. Some were Americans, but many came from places like China, Mexico, Europe, and Australia. All right, so digging for gold. Many of the first prospectors, they did make a lot of money, all right? All right, they're off, they often would make 10 times in a day what they could work in a normal job. So the, the original miners would pan for gold. They'd, they'd use pan and pan for it, all right? And later there were more methods that were used to allow multiple people to work together and search for uh, bigger amounts of gravel for gold, but but originally they used to pan, and, and oftentimes the, the the first ones did get rich, a lot of them. Digging for gold. Many of the first prospectors did make a lot of money. They often made 10 times in a day what they could work in a, no, a normal job. The original miners would pan for gold. Later, more complex methods were used to allow multiple miners to work together and search larger amounts of gravel for gold. All right. So what's panning for gold? All right, you see the picture here. You see the guy's panning. He's got a pan. He's got that. Well, what they would do, the, the pan was used to separate gold from dirt and gravel, and this was called panning. All right, and uh, gold's heavy. So if you shook it around, eventually it would work its, itself to the bottom of the pan, and all the other stuff would come up. So uh, the worthless material would be on the top. And then the miner, all he'd have to do is just set it aside, and he'd be able to fish out the the gold out of the bottom. So 
This was this is called panning for gold. What is panning for gold? One method miners used to separate gold from dirt and gravel was called panning. When panning for gold, miners put gravel and water into the pan and then shook the pan back and forth. Because gold is heavy, it will eventually work its way to the bottom of the pan. After shaking the pan for a while, the gold will be on the bottom of the pan and the worthless material will be at the top. Then the miner can extract the gold and set it aside. All right. All these thousand miners, they needed supplies, okay? So the typical supplies for mining, they included a mining pan, a shovel, pick for mining. They had their living supplies. They had, you know, coffee, bacon, sugar, beans, flour, bedding, a tent, lamp, kettle, all these different things. And a lot of times the store owners who sold supplies to the to the miners, they became even wealthier than the miners did because they were able to sell these items the day Talk about inflation, okay? They would they would up the prices on them. They'd make them, but they were willing to pay for it because they needed it. Supplies. All these thousands of miners needed supplies. Typical supplies for a miner included a mining pan, a shovel, and a pick for mining. They also needed food and living supplies such as coffee, bacon, sugar, beans, flour, bedding, a tent, lamp, and a kettle. The store and business owners who sold supplies to the miners often became wealthier than the miners. They were able to sell items at very high prices, and the miners were willing to pay. All right, so boom towns. Whenever gold was discovered in a new place, all right, they would come in and they would set up these camps, and and, and these camps would rapidly grow into towns. They'd get bigger and bigger because more and more people were coming to try to find gold. So San Francisco and Columbia are two of these boom towns during the gold rush that are still around today. Boom towns. Whenever gold was discovered in a new place, miners would move in and make a mining camp. Sometimes these camps would rapidly grow into towns called boom towns. The city of San Francisco and Columbia are two examples of boom towns during the gold rush. All right, and then you also, uh, as opposed to boom towns, you had ghost towns. All right, and that's where these boom towns were abandoned ghost towns, all right, uh, because they, they abandoned these areas when the gold would run out. So the gold ran out in the area, and they, they'd just leave to find the next gold strike, and businesses and everything would leave too. And the same, town would be empty, and they're still around today. Uh, if I can move this out of the way so I can see. Uh, Bodie, California is a ghost town today, and you can go to Bodie, California. It's a popular tourist attraction and still see that. Ghost towns. A lot of boom towns eventually turned into an abandoned ghost towns. When the gold ran out in the area, the miners would leave to find the next gold strike. The businesses would leave too, and soon the town would be empty and abandoned. One example of a gold rush ghost town is Bodie, California. Today, it is a popular tourist attraction. All right, let's talk about our comprehensive question. Number one, where was the gold first found in California? A. Sutter Mill? Uh, B, Oklahoma, or C, Seattle, it was A, Sutter Mill. Ding, ding, ding. James we Marshall found it at Sutter Mill. Number two, what was the nickname for people who moved to California during the gold rush? This was happened in 1849 when about 90,000 people came from all over the place. Was it A, Carpetbaggers, B, 49ers, or C, Pioneers? It is B, 49ers. Ding, ding, ding. We have a winner. Number three, what were towns called that grew rapidly when gold was discovered nearby? They were called something whenever they, was it A, rush towns, B, cities of gold, or C, boom towns? It was called C, boom towns, because they would get really big really fast. All these people would come looking for gold. Ding, ding, ding. We have a winner. Number four, what was it called when miners used pans to separate dirt from gold? They'd use the pans, and they would move it around, and the gold's heavier, so it would go to the bottom, and all the other stuff would come to the top. Was it called A, panning, B, summoning, or C, dirting? It was called A, panning. Ding, ding, ding. We have a winner. And our last one, what were towns called that were abandoned once all the gold was gone? Was it A, Hoovervilles, B, ghost towns, or C, Lonelyvilles? It was called B, ghost towns, one... One place like that is Bodie, California today. Uh, they had ghost town where they just, it would go up, all the gold would leave, uh, or they'd mine all the gold out of the area, and then, you know, there's no more money to be made, so they would up and leave and just leave everything the way it was. Nobody was there anymore. Ding, ding, ding. 
we have a winner. All right, class, that is all for today. Uh, we'll continue with westward, westward expansion. we got a couple more lessons to do, and uh, I will see you all next time. Be sure you go on Schoology, go through this, turn it in, and get credit. I'll see you next time.